What's up guys, Evil Deer here and I'm back for some more World of Warcraft slash Esperanto lessons. Now, I actually attempted to film this lesson once before this, like I actually went and joined an instance, like a dungeon group, I was really excited, and then I just got into this like group that was just filled with these, like this rogue who just powered through the instance, went and killed like the last boss, and then that was pretty much it, like it was literally just me trying to catch up, and nothing exciting happened, so I decided, you know what, I'm not going to do another instance group tonight, I'll probably give it another go tomorrow, but um, yeah, it just it wasn't fun at all, and it was very difficult to teach you guys anything, because I was literally just trying to run past all these mobs while they were sapped and stuff, and it just resulted in bad. And by the way, I had lots of fun doing this, look, it's like, whee, whee, whee. I was just doing this earlier for like ages, because I was just having fun with myself. But anyway, let's move on to today's lesson. So I guess we're just going to explore north, because there's like this little red... Um, flight path up there, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to go check that out. So, we're going to practice some new grammar, um, some new words along the way, and it should be fun anyway. So, ooh, you see there's a little leaf and it's falling? I just, for some reason, that leaf just caught my attention. Look, there's another one. And I'm going to teach you the word for leaf. And the word for leaf is folio. Folio. So, just watch out, because in the future, we're going to be talking about those a lot. Okay, so, a little bit of revision. How do you say, I want to drink? You'd say... Me volas trinki. Oh, by the way, you notice I've got like this new spell. I actually changed my specs since I'm going to be like out here grinding and stuff. I figured I might as well be a damaging rather than healing spec because, you know, it doesn't work very good I'm trying to kill things as a healer. Anyway, and what is the Esperanto word for these dudes, these hippogriffs or whatever they're called? It is hippogrifo. Hippogrifo. And what was the word for basilis? Basilisco. Basilisco. Cool. Oh, look at this guy. Now, I meant to teach you the word for these guys in the last lesson. Let's see if I can take him out. This here is clearly a giant in my eyes. I don't know about you guys, but he looks like a giant to me. And the word for giant in Esperanto, I should probably be careful. Yeah, I thought that might happen. Oh, God. This is bad. I'm already getting raged. The word for giant in Esperanto is giganto. Giganto, okay? And that there actually means like gigantic person. Like literally, it's um it's in the, the Bible that's been translated to Esperanto, so it's a real word. Don't think I'm just making that up. But you can also use it as an adjective. And as an adjective, giganta means gigantic or like massive, like really big. So yeah, giganto is giant. Oh no, please don't die, please don't die! Gun! Cheeseburgers! Okay, apparently I'm dead. That's cool, I didn't think I could take that guy on anyway. So, I'm going to teach you the word for big now. And the word for big is granda. Granda. And I might have taught you this a few lessons back, I can't remember, sorry. But we're just going to go with the flow. So how would you say the giant is big? La giganto estas granda. Now that's probably a little bit contradictory because it's actually the giant is gigantic. So how do you say the giant is gigantic? La giganto estas giganta. <laughs> yeah, I know, that was a, we're just playing up words there. Okay, how do you say I want to eat? Mi volas manji. Mi volas manji. I just tried to attack that flying thing. Okay, and how would you say, I want to drink water? Mi volas trinki akvon. Mi volas trinki akvon. Okay, and how would you say, um, the hippogriff likes to fly? La hippogrifo shatas flugi. Okay, so now it's time to learn some new words. I'm going to teach you how to say uh, to give now. And the way to say to give is doni. Doni. So how would you say I give? Mi donas. Mi donas. And how would you say I give the leaf to you? Now you know how to say to you. How is that? It, or how do you say that? It is alvi. So how do you think you'd say, I give the leaf? 
mi donas la folion, and then al vi. Notice how it's in the accusative case, because doni is a transitive verb, okay? So just remember that. So if you're giving something, that thing that you're giving is in the, transi is in the transitive case. And how do you say rabbit? It is kuniklo. Kuniklo. No, <laughs> I just killed it. Okay, so how would you say um, I give the rabbit food, or not the rabbit food, the rabbit meat to you? Now, I haven't taught you rabbit meat, but I've taught you how to make food out of, like, a living thing. Mi donas la cuniclajon al vi. Mi donas la cuniclajon al vi. Okay, and how would you say um, she gives me uh, the leaf? She donas al mi la folion. You notice how I've swapped that around? You can do that in Esperanto. You can say uh, mi donas la folion al vi, or you could say uh, mi donas al vi la folion. You can you can swap out or swap around the location because that's the point of the accusative case. It's really up to you, your preference. Okay, so we're now going to learn how to like give an order. And when I say give an order, like make a uh, a command basically. So when you tell someone give me the leaf that's basically you're commanding them to give you the leaf even if they don't give it to you um, you're still issuing an order okay now in english we don't have really well, in english we kind of put the verb at the beginning i guess we say give me and then whatever it is but in esperanto what we do is we actually change the ending now you remember how to say to give yeah it is doni and you know how to say present tense give it is donas. So now we're going to learn how to give a command. So the way to say give, like as in I order you to give, is donu. Ooh, ooh. You hear that ooh sound at the end? If you put that ooh at the end of any verb in Esperanto, it turns that verb into a command or a request. So how would you say give me the leaf? Donu al mi la folion. Donu al mi la folion. Give me your deer. If you've got a pet deer, I don't know where that came from. I'm just looking at a deer. Donu al mi vian cervon. Donu al mi vian cervon. Okay, cool. Let's just check this guy out, what he's got. Ooh, looks like we're heading towards the coast. Oh, there's a quest over here in this house. What was the word for house? It is domo, domo. And how do you say, I walk into the house? Mi iras en la domon. Mi iras en la domon. Now, I just want to point out something else to you. In Esperanto, you will hear mi iras en la domon, which means I walk into the house. But you might also hear mi en iras la domon, okay? What you can do with a lot of verbs in Esperanto is you can rem you can change the location of the n and you can attach it to the beginning of say the verb. So for instance, you can say mi en iras la domon, and that en iras that's all one word. So now mi en iras la domon means exactly the same as mi iras en la domon. Okay, they both just mean I walk into the house or I enter the house. Anyway. Now, where is this quest? Oh, it's over here. Mm, I didn't even see it. Okay, let's see what he wants me to do. Okay, he wants me to slay a bunch of things. That's rather nice of him. What is it with people in this world all wanting me to kill things? Why, why is there no, like, go kiss this person? There probably is, to be honest. But anyway. Okay, so how would you say, um, give me, uh, let's think of something that we've got around here. Uh, Give me your house, for instance. Donu al mi vian domon. Donu al mi vian domon. Okay, cool. Now, do you remember how to say white? It is blanca. Blanca. And I might as well teach you the word for bear while I'm at it. So the word for bear is uruso. Uruso. So how would you say white bear? You'd say blanca uruso. Or you could say uruso blanca. It's up to you. Again, 
So how would you then say, no, you know what? I'm going to teach you how to say to kill, okay, as in kill someone. So the way to say to die in Esperanto is morti, morti, okay? And that means to die. But if you, when you want to kill someone, you, you don't want them just, you're not saying to die that person. You can't to die someone, but you can kill. Now, to turn an intransitive verb like morti into a transitive verb, we have a special, bleh, special, we have a special suffix for it, okay? And that suffix is iggy. Iggy. And if you attach that onto the end of any verb, it basically turns that verb into a transitive. So mortity becomes mortitigi, which become which goes from to die, which turns into kill. Because you're causing basically iggy means to cause. So to cause to die is to kill. Yeah? So how would you say I kill um, the black bear? Mi mortigas la nigran uduson. Mi mortigas la nigran uduson. Cool. And he is about to die. And how would you say I killed the black bear? Mi mortigis la nigran uduson. Cool, cool. Now let's go over here. You know, I'm going to teach you the word for brown as well since we've got all the shades of the rainbow here. Not that brown is actually on the rainbow. rainbow. But brown is bruna. Bruna. So, how would you say, I kill the brown bear? Mi mortigas la brunan uruson. Now, I know these guys aren't exactly bears. They're kind of like humanoid bears because, you know, they're walking on all twos and they're on all twos. They're walking on, you know, both feet. That one looks like he's probably trying to pull a dance move off and they've got like sticks and stuff. So maybe I should probably be saying um, Urusulo. But I'm just going to stick with Uruso because yeah, they're more bear than human to me. And that's good enough for me. You can judge me later. Okay. So, how would I say kill the bear? Mordetigu la Uruson. Mordetigu la Uruson. Mordetigu la Uruson. Awesome! I've gone up. By the way, you'll probably notice I'm level 16 now because I did a little bit of grinding in between because I want to get out. I only want to spend maybe like one or two episodes in each area, just kind of like spice it up a bit. Okay, now we're going to practice one last like set of things for the day and I have to teach you some new words for it. Um, it's not really based on the things that we're seeing around us, but you know, you kind of need to know this. So, I'm going to teach you the difference between the two words for of in Esperanto. Yes, Esperanto has two words. The one is de and the other is da. And the best way to teach you this is through an example. So first up, we're going to learn a new noun. And the noun we're going to learn is botello. And botello means, if you haven't guessed already, bottle. Okay? So, we have two ways to say a bottle of water. You have botello de acavo or you have botello da acvo, okay? So, and both of those have very different meanings based on which you use, de or da. So the best way to think about it, if you're new to learning Esperanto is, now this is only a general rule. Once you get into the language and you learn the intricacies of everything, the nuances, you'll, you'll understand it better. But the best way to think about this is that de means of in pretty much every situation. However, if, no, that's probably a bad way of explaining it. We'll start with da. Da means of as in a, a measure, a quantity, a weight, a distance. Now that probably means very little to you and you're like, eh? So I'll give you the example that I was talking about earlier. So, botello da acvo means a bottle full of water, okay? Well, botello de acvo means a bottle of water. Now, you're probably like, well, there's no difference there. Well, there is actually a difference, and it's just English that doesn't see that difference. So, when I say botello de acvo, which means a um, bottle of water, it's actually just saying it's a bottle and it's designed for water, okay? That's its chief focus. But it doesn't necessarily have water in it at the moment. It 
it might have water in it in the future. Um, yeah. But it's, it doesn't actually say anything about the contents, it's just explaining what the bottle is used for. So, Bottello de Acquavo, Bottello de Acquavo, just means water bottle, okay? So, for instance, you can get a water bottle here, and you can put Coke in it. It's still a water bottle, but you just put Coke in it, okay? You don't say, I've got a Coke bottle now. So yeah, there's, that's probably the best way to look at it that way. But if you say Botello da Acqua, what you're now saying, it's a bottle and it's full of water, okay? So for instance, you could say, um, I'll teach you the word for milk. So the word for milk is Lacto, Lacto, okay? So if you said Botello de Lacto, it means a bottle that is, it's, it's a milk bottle. So for instance, a baby's bottle. It's designed for milk, but it doesn't necessarily have milk in it. At this very moment, you can put anything in it. But if you say botello da lacto, botello da lacto, you're now saying that it's a bottle, and I'm lagging, and it contains milk at this very moment. It is a quantity of like the bottle is the quantity, okay? As I said before, and the what it's containing is the milk. So da basically says that the first thing that comes in front of it, front of it, usually a noun or an adverb is the quantity, it is the uh, measure, it's the weight or it's the distance and what comes after it is the thing that it contains. So, botello is now quantity, da means of or full of basically and lacto means milk. So it's saying a bottle quantity or a bottle full of milk. Now that's the best way to try and explain it. Now obviously you can use it with other things, so for instance you could say, uh, for instance the word for peace, like as, not peace like in world peace, but like peace in the territory or peace in pizza, is pezzo, pezzo, so you could say pezzo da terro, and you already know terro, it means earth, okay, so it's a piece of earth, it is a measurement, so pezzo is a measurement, so therefore you'd say pezzo da terro. So, it's going to take a lot to get used to playing with these two. Um, I'll give you random examples as we move through the series, and we'll use them more and more. And it's basically just a, um, over time you get used to it. And look, even now, I every now and then make mistakes with the two because they just don't exist in English. And you have to just think a little bit and you go, wait, am I saying of as in the sense of like a quality, uh, not a quality, a quantity, a measurement or something like that? Or am I just saying of as in describing the thing? Okay, cool. So anyway, let's just do a little bit of revision of what we've learnt. So, how do you say um, giant? It is giganto. And how do you say gigantic? It is giganta. Giganta. So, how do you say bear? It is uduso. Uduso. And how would you say a giant bear, as in like a bear the size of a giant? Giganta uduso. And how would you say a bottle of milk, but the bottle's currently full of milk, and you're talking about the quantity? Botello da lacto. Botello da lacto. And how would you say a bottle of milk, as in it's just a bottle and it's designed for milk? Botello de lacto. Botello de lacto. Anyway, we've reached the end of this lesson. There was a lot of explaining in this one because of the concepts that I taught you, not too many new words. There was a few, there was a few. So anyway, if you've liked this video or this lesson, um, give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you're not there, well then, I might use my giganto on you. <laughs> Chuvi fa la stanzi, gran grandarando, into homo e dello tutto il mondo.